are not alone. You belong. It gets better. Three simple sentences that have the power to profoundly and positively impact diverse peoples experiencing a huge range of challenges. This was the finding of a Stanford University social psychology study that resulted in the so-called belonging intervention. A simple premise and an even simpler method, storytelling. Connecting different groups through sharing stories, generating incredible results. Good evening. My name is Kim Samuel. The sustenance we draw knowing we are not alone is what I want to talk about tonight. My mission is building the bonds of belonging, not because it is something pleasant or nice to do, but because I believe that belonging is a human right, not a need, but a right. I believe that repairing and renewing human connectedness is one of the greatest challenges of our time. It may sound paradoxical in our digital age where we're seemingly connected round the clock. Yet, more and more we hear reports of people feeling alone and cut off, a feeling I metaphorically describe as sitting alone at the bottom of a well. We see it in cities where people spend more time in their cars or on their screens and less time getting to know their neighbors. We see loneliness skyrocketing among older people and surging among younger ones too. Just last month, The Atlantic profiled a shocking rise in teenage depression and anxiety linked directly to smartphones and the retreat of teens from real social interactions. We see it here in Canada, the refugees we have been proud to welcome and also share the struggles of searching for identity, for hope, or of missing everything they were forced to flee, including happiness. You see, as human beings, we are social creatures we rely on others to help us thrive and grow. And when we are deprived of meaningful relationships, it literally makes us sick. Our cells inflame, our hormones misfire, our immune systems weaken. Studies have concluded that isolation is as bad for your health as smoking, 15 cigarettes a day. This is a silent epidemic and a barrier to economic growth. Because when society sends a person or a group of people the message that they do not belong, it makes them feel less valued, less significant, less human. And nobody should ever be made to feel less than. Yet, to paraphrase Leonard Cohen, there is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. When social bonds are strong, connectedness and feelings of belonging catalyze progress. By building belonging at the heart of every endeavor, we can all contribute to the way forward. And by the way, we only belong if we belong together. Now, way back in the last century, when I was in school, the three R's that were really important were reading, writing, and arithmetic. Please ignore for a moment that only one of those actually begins with the letter R. But now I see an additional three R's, respect, recognition, and reciprocity. Together, they build what I envision as the three pillars of a social connectedness framework. And moreover, they begin to help us to give life to and to live the human right to belong. The first pillar, respect, 
means that new ideas and programs must begin with active listening, where every voice in the community has value. The point of listening isn't simply to sympathize with those in pain or those who are suffering. The point is that strategies embedded in listening, awareness, and solidarity are the best way to build cohesion and connection and to bring communities together. Too often, those with the best of intentions try to impose their own solutions from outside. It reminds me of a story about seven young scouts who proudly reported how they had helped a nine-year-old woman across the road. That's great, said their troop leader, but why did it take seven scouts? And one scout bravely stepped forward and said, well, she didn't want to go. Instead of trying to lead from the front, we must get behind communities themselves because overcoming isolation is always done with and not for. Operating from a foundation of mutual respect helps reinforce the second pillar, recognition. Helping a community uplift itself begins with honoring its worth. Typically, programs focus on a community's problems or gaps, which can reinforce a sense of dependence, deficiency, or despair but recognition leads us to search for its strengths and to build on them together. Connectedness is always a two-way street in reaching out to others. We are touched as well. Pillar number three is embracing the critical value of reciprocity. Embracing reciprocity leads to solutions and interventions that generate multiple benefits because they strive not simply to address one sector or one group, but rather to reinforce linkages. When we take this approach, exciting possibilities emerge for community-driven, sustainable solutions that draw critical connections for every member of community. Through engagement between groups, we foster empathy that in turn will lead to new ideas and strengthen support. Here in Canada, as we reflect on 150 years, there is an opportunity and an imperative to reach much further and to finally and fully listen, especially here and especially now. I believe ancient wisdom will light a pathway to a more connected future. Through respect, recognition, and reciprocity, we can embrace the reality that we are the same human family. We can look to traditional wisdom, Sawak, as expressed by New Chamnath peoples, which means we are all one. We are connected. These sentiments sum up a new paradigm that we all need to reflect upon in our own lives and in plans and policies for the future. One way forward, enlightened by this deep listening, can ensure that we remember there is no them. There is always and only ever us. Rosanna Deerchild, a remarkable Cree poet, has shared, the round dance is not over until the circle is complete, until all the people are dancing as one. It is in this spirit we can all champion and ultimately realize the human right to belong. As Margaret Atwood wrote, we need each other's breathing, warmth, Surviving is the only war we can afford. I cannot say it any better than that. Thank you very much for your time and for your listening.